This is the Honda CB754. It arrived on the scene in 1969 and I think it did more to influence the design of motorcycles as we know them today than any other motorcycle in history. It was the first real superbike. The Honda designers took a number of ideas which affected all areas of the bike, ideas which were proven and reliable, and combined them all into one machine, a machine which was uh, beautiful and desirable. When this Honda appeared on the market in 1969, I was saddened because I realized this was the start of the Japanese invasion on one hand, and it was going to accelerate the decline of the British motorcycle industry on the other. Subsequently, I realized that it was a step change and has led in many ways to the evolution and improvement of motorcycles as we know them today. The Japanese did take a different approach. They had the confidence in their design and the nerve and the resources to aim for world markets and so they tooled up accordingly for mass-produced motorcycles. When we look at the features of this bike, remember all the time that it's 1969 that we're talking about. First of all, we have four cylinders across the frame, new. We have an overhead camshaft on a production bike, very rare. We have four exhaust pipes and four silencers. In your face, really. It had acceleration, vivid acceleration to 115 miles an hour, smoothly, without vibration and without oil leaks. Very rare. It has five gallon tank, five speed gearbox, four carburetors, 12 volt electrics with indicators, mirrors, rev counter as well as speedometer, front disc brake. We'd never seen all of these features before in one single motorcycle. And on top of that, electric start. These bikes were produced for a broad market, not necessarily for die-hard motorcyclists. And they succeeded in that. They had some success in production racing, which boosted sales further. And in the decade from 1969, they sold hundreds and thousands of these machines. It was a real success. Once on the road, everything works well. It feels good, it looks good, and it sounds great. The overwhelming impression I have from this motorcycle thing which influences me more than anything else and gives great fun is the engine and transmission. It's, it is four-cylinder and it is so smooth, so elastic. You can go from 15 miles an hour to 115 miles an hour in top gear without snatch or hesitation. Amazing, wonderful. There are faults with the bike. The braking is very wooden and the switch gear is a bit iffish. The handling isn't up to the standard of the best of British bikes at that time, but this particular machine has modern shocks and tire and handled extremely well. The CB750 is a very nice motorcycle. I like it. It does, however, lack one thing, in my opinion, and that is soul. Perhaps I'm prejudiced. But I have to admire it for what it did for motorcycling, for the changes which resulted from its introduction and which are with us today. That's why I admire it.